hello students continue with the chapter 3 that is human reproduction today we are going to study structure and different parts of human sperm its different parts and their functions and then we will continue uh, with the human female reproductive system and its different parts so first we will move to the next slide that is structure and function of different parts in human sperm we are going to label one by one the first part that is here is the first part and this first part is actually the head this one we all know that human sperms are produced in seminiferous tubules and they are released from seminiferous tubules they are carried by uh, rati testes then vas afferentia then they will enter into vas deferens and then through urethra where they are joining with the uh, seminal fluid and then at the ejaculation time they enter in female reproductive tract so the sperms are produced and the spermatids undergo differentiation and sperms are formed the first structure that is the head this head has at the at the tip it has a structure very very important that is acrosome okay now this acrosome contains a wide variety of hydrolytic enzymes so these enzymes will help in in uh, breakdown of the outer covering of egg so that the sperm can enter inside the egg besides acrosome in the head there is the nucleus so here is the nucleus now this nucleus contain the genetic material which is actually the haploid and it contains 23 number of chromosome which are haploid because the sperms are gamete they are formed after meiosis the next structure that is this this part okay this part is actually the neck this neck has the pair of centrioles that is the centro centrosome and two centrioles are there the first one is proximal and the second one is distal proximal centriole has the function very important function that it helps in first cleavage what is cleavage when the zygote is formed after 24 hours the zygote starts mitotic division to form embryo in humans so proximal centriole it helps in first cleavage because it helps in formation of spindle fiber which helps in mitotic division which is which occurs in the cleavage then the distal centriole the distal centriole actually forms that axial filament so the distal centriole forms the axial filament okay now the third part the third part is the middle piece this middle piece the middle piece which has got you can see the round structures here these are actually mitochondria mitochondria which are large in number here why because sperm needs lot of energy to reach from female reproductive tract to the site of fertilization that is oviduct Okay, now the middle piece has the mitochondria, and then it starts the tail. Okay, so starting from this part, this one, the complete part is tail. The tail has, you know, that this is the axial filament, and this axial filament has, the tail has the axial filament, which is actually this is axial filament, and this has the structure of. flagella 
So the flagellar structure we have studied in 11th standard that is 9 plus 2 arrangement. Flagella, flagella has 9 plus 2 arrangement. But you can see here, this is actually the end piece of the tail and this end piece does not have axial filament. This is end piece. So end piece does not have the axial filament. Now when the sperms uh, they are released from Sertoli cells from the seminiferous tubules. The process is known as spermiation. Spermiation means release of sperm. Okay, the sperms which are released at one ejection, one ejaculation, which is which consists of two to three mL of semen, it contains. 200 to 300 million sperms so sperms so the 1 ml should contain 100 ml okay this is the normal uh, number of sperms if number is less than 20 million in 100 million should be there in 1 ml if less than 10 million then 10 to 20 we can say 20 or 10 yeah 20 20 100 is the normal one so the 20 ml if less than 20 ml uh, 20 uh, million in 1 ml in 1 ml then it is the condition is abnormal which is known as oli oligospermia because actually the sperms which are spermia the sperms which are released only the 60 percent they they you know reach to the uh, um, 60 percent they are of normal shape and size and 40 percent they have the motility so if if the number will decrease then they will not be able to reach their uh, in the oviduct and this will affect the fertility so oligospermia okay now human spermatozoa it swims in the female reproductive tract its speed is 1 to 3 mm per minute so the speed is 1 to 3 millimeter per minute right now that's all for the different parts of the human sperm and their functions right you can if you have missed anything yeah here here are the different parts and their functions okay that's all for the hum, uh, human male reproductive system we have seen in the last two videos that the male reproductive system the different parts their functions we have also seen spermatogenesis and now uh, even the hormonal control of spermatogenesis and today we have uh, finished this topic uh, of human male reproductive system with the sperm now we will start with female reproductive system so female reproductive system this is actually the side view and we just label the different parts this part the primary sex organ is the primary sex organ which is present in female is primary sex organs means which produce the egg and which releases the uh, which releases the uh, hormones okay so this is the ovary and the primary sex organ is actually the ovary Okay, now the ovary releases the egg and it will uh, released into the peritoneal that is the coelomic cavity and this will be then carried away by the tube which is known as oviduct. The, the first part of the oviduct that is the infundibulum and this infundibulum has this finger like projection ciliated part which is known as fimbriae so fimbriae okay now the next 
part from that first part infundibulum it will the next part that is the ampulla part okay so this one is the broad part ampulla now this is the part of ampulla which is actually the part of ovi duct right this ovi duct will enter into the womb which is also known as uterus this uterus has different parts we'll see in the next uh, coming slides the detail of all the structures we'll see it is just the side view we just uh, we should know that what are the parts present here so this one this part which is the last part of the uterus the fundus part the main part and this one is last part which is known as cervix because this cervix then leads to external genitalia which is known as uterus which is known as vagina now this will open into uh, outside that is through orifice so right now the external genitalia where the large and the major and the uh, minor labium so labium majora and labium minora now this structure which is the most sensitive part that is clitoris we will see th the detail of all these structures in the coming slide this one is anus which is the part of the digestive system and before the anus we all know in the large intestine that is the presence of rectum now this is the bladder urinary bladder okay this is urinary bladder and here is the pubic symphysis which plays important role pubic symphysis which play very important role at the time of birth and this one is urinary bladder so this is urethra okay that's all for the uh, all the label uh, labeling of that female protosystem side view you can see here in this slide all the labeling is here if you have missed it then you can note down from this diagram now this is actually the front view the major actually the question comes from this diagram only okay so one by one again there is a revision but th this is the front view so we will start writing the first uh, actually the ovaries the pair of ovaries which are present these ovaries are present in the lower abdominal region and they are attached to the posterior layer of the broad filament actually the, uh, the broad ligament this broad ligament is the uh, it is actually the uh, peritoneal ligament what is peritoneum peritoneum means the mesothelium covering of the coelom and it's uh, the different visceral organs so the broad ligament or the peritoneal ligament the ovaries are attached to that broad ligament and they are attached to the broad ligament with the help of this mesorium uh, meso ovarium so i'll broad ligament is already there so i'll label that part this is actually meso meso ovarium through meso ovarium the ovary is attached to the broad ligament and the ovary is also attached to the uterus by ovarian ligament right now we'll move to the part that is ovary ovary releases egg which is accepted by we have already seen that structure so actually this labeling is already here that is fimbriae part and this fimbriae part is actually the part of infundibulum infundibulum which is the first part of oviduct then 
the next part of oviduct is ampulla and this ampulla is the broadest part then the narrow part is known as isthmus so we have seen first part second part and third part of oviduct so oviduct has three parts oviduct leads to the womb which is inverted pear shaped structure and the this inverted pear shaped structure is the first dome shaped part we can write here fundus part so this is fundus now the body main body of the uterus so this is the body these two parts are of uterus okay so these are uterus part uterine part this is actually the uterus this covering this is actually the 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 actually the uterus is covered by three membrane perimetrium myometrium and endometrium right so here is when we open that uterus it is actually the open flap so this is actually the perimetrium you can write here right this is and this one is the myometrium so here we can write the perimetrium okay and the muscular layer that is the myometrium right okay the innermost layer this one this is the endometrium so again the uterus has the three layered uterus is three layered the first one is perimetrium outermost which is epithelial okay then the next one myometrium which is the smooth muscles and the third one endometrium this endometrium uh, is not fixed in shape and it can uh, it can become thicker during the uh, menstrual cycle and then again at the time of menstruation the uh, shedding of the endometrium occurs and the bleeding occurs so endometrium thickening of endometrium is irregular and it regularly keeps on changing during the cyclic events after that so this is actually the uterine cavity uterine cavity and this uterus leads to the last part that was the fundus part that was the body part and the last part of the uterus this is cervix cervix is also the part of uterus and this cervix has two opening the opening in the ut uterine body and the opening into the vagina so opening into the uterine body that is internal orifice so this this is actually the cervical canal and this opening is internal os that is orifice right opening this is cervical canal and the opening of cervix into the vagina that is known as external orifice so this is external orifice right this external genitalia and the cervix these two together form birth canal so this is vagina right okay so now we will see one by one all the structures which are present in human female reproductive system this is the structure which we have just now seen all the labeling you can easily write if you have missed something now we will move to the different parts the first we have already seen that the ovary structure okay so the ovary we have already seen that this ovary is attached to the uh, broad ligament and with the help of with the help of suspensory ligament this suspensory ligament is also the part of broad ligament only okay and it is attached with the uh, uterus to the uterus with the ovarian ligament right the ovary is attached to the broad ligament with the help of that portion was actually meso ovarian so don't get confused 
there is a broad ligament there is a suspensory ligament there is a uh, ovarian ligament okay so these are the parts of the peritoneal uh, ligament only right now we'll see the detailed structure of ovary and the various stages of follicle cells which are present in the ovary so we will start with the first one that is outermost layer of first we label and then we will see the uh, detail and the function of the different parts so first outermost layer that is the germinal epithelium and this is actually the germinal epithelium this layer so first labeling germinal epithelium and we all know that germinal epithelium is actually the cuboidal epithelium which is uh, responsible for forming oogonia so that the oogonia will be differentiated into primary oocyte and then primary oocyte will form the egg so germinal epithelium just inner to the germinal epithelium this is structure okay this is actually the layer tunica albuginea which is fibrous coat grayish in color so this is actually tunica albuginea tunica this is fibrous coat tunica albuginea fibrous coat which is whitish in color and provide the uh, color slightly grayish to the ovary right and then we'll start one by one the follicles which are present now this one we all know that uh, the actually the ligaments different ligaments that is the suspensory ligament or ovarian ligament they have the function for the vascular supply so this is actually the blood vessels which are coming inside this is the hilum part hilum part from the the ovarian ligament the ovary is attached to the uterus this is not oviduct this is actually the ovarian ligament okay now this is blood vascular supply which is entering inside the first cells which are already present when the female child is born these structures are known as primordial follicle primordial follicle and these are the structures which are present the primordial follicle will leads to primary follicle we will see one by one all these uh, follicle cells and their structures in detail these are primary follicle okay primary follicle after development will form secondary follicle right then the secondary follicle will develop into tertiary follicle actually granulosa cells which are present more and more layers are you know surround the primary follicle and it will be changed into the secondary and then the tertiary follicle okay let me write it again right uh, tertiary follicle the tertiary follicle is characterized by tertiary follicle this tertiary follicle is characterized by the appearance of that cavity which is known as actually antrum right so antrum is start forming now this is tertiary follicle and the last fully matured follicle mature mature follicle which are also known as this is also known as graafian follicle so i can write here graafian follicle inside that graafian follicle we can mark here this is actually secondary oocyte why because the first meiotic division already occurs and the second primary oocyte forms secondary oocyte this is actually the primary oocyte this primary oocyte undergo meiotic division by the time the development of these follicle occurring that they are changing from primary to tertiary the meiosis which was arrested at the time of birth right it regain the capacity divide and it divides first meiotic division occurs and secondary oocyte which is haploid is formed this secondary oocyte will be released under the influence of lh lh surge will occur and rupturing of that graafian follicle occur so rupturing of graafian follicle which is also known as ovulation 
So this process is actually ovulation where the secondary oocyte is released and this one is secondary oocyte. So secondary oocyte has the covering, outermost covering, corona radiata. Children, you label all the things so that I'll, uh, you can answer me when in the coming slides we will study each structure in detail. Okay, this is corona radiata and this one is ovum you can write or the egg membrane you can write okay so this is ovum right this one is actually ruptured follicle right and this ruptured follicle will form the corpus luteum so ruptured follicle clear now this will convert into the corpus luteum so here is the corpus luteum. This corpus luteum will start forming progesterone. Right? This corpus luteum starts secreting progesterone. In case fertilization occur, then corpus luteum will be maintained so that the thickened endometrium is maintained for the development of the fetus. But in case fertilization will not occur, then what will happen? This uh, corpus luteum this is fully matured corpus luteum so matured corpus luteum and if fertilization will not occur it will degenerate after we uh, you know it will wait for the egg will wait for one week and then it will not uh, be fertilized it will not get fertilized then what will happen this corpus luteum start degenerating and it will form corpus albicans and this corpus albicans is a whitish structure. This corpus luteum is yellow. So this is yellow in color. Luteum means yellow. Yellow and this is white. You know, besides all these formation and developing, many follicles, they undergo degeneration here. Because half a million of, you know, follicles are present at the time of birth. So, so many follicles degenerate, which are known as atresia follicular. Now, this outer portion we can see that actually the follicles are found only the outer layer of the, you know, ovary. This outer layer is actually the cortex part and the inner layer where the blood vascular supply is there, this inner part is medulla. Generally, we do not found any, we do not find any follicle inside that medulla region and the outer region is cortex region where these follicles are found. That's all for the structure. You can see in the next slide all the labeling. We have just now studied. Right? There will be a revision for you. Okay? Now, we will see one by one the detailed structure of all the follicle cells also and the different layers which are present in the ovary. Yes. The ovarian structure. We have already seen that the germinal epithelium which is cuboidal. Right? and simple cuboidal epithelium germinal epithelium this is not mesothelial derived okay this is epithelial tissue right which is which forms the germinal epithelium then the second layer that is the tunica albuginea which is the fibrous coating this forms the cortex region then the so the cortical and the medulla region the cortical region where the all the follicles are formed and the inner medullary region where the blood vascular supply and nerve supply is present okay now ovarian hilum from where the ovary is attached to the ovarian ligament with the uh, uterus ovarian tissue is composed of ovarian follicles which are at different stages of development and ovarian stroma which is present inside that and this is various types of spindle cells and collagen fiber okay now the ovarian follicles different types the ovarian follicle we have already seen the structure so you just keep that structure in the mind right the follicle cells the primary follicle four types primary follicle 
before that the primordial follicle of course are there so primordial follicle then primary follicle then secondary follicle and then tertiary follicles tertiary follicle which form the mature graphene follicle one by one we'll see the structure primordial follicle they the, these are the present in the ovary from birth till puberty from birth already the uh, formed primary oocytes are there right actually the spermatogenesis starts in human male at the onset of puberty but in human female the oogenesis starts in the uh, at the embryonal stage only and this oogenesis start from oogonia they will differentiate differentiate into primary oocyte these primary oocyte enters in meiosis 1 and then in diploteen stage this meiosis 1 is arrested so already the half of the million oocytes primary oocytes are already present in the ovary when the female child borns okay these are the primordial follicles so you can see structure here right this is the primary oocyte and the surrounding here is the granulosa cells now it will change into primary follicle now you can we can see here that around that oocyte the single layer of granulosa granulosa cells because these granulosa cells are actually meant for uh, release of uh, the hormones okay that is the estrogen and this estrogen will uh, help in estrogen will help in uh, formation of that the changing of primary follicle to graphene follicle and this estrogen is released by granulosa cells under the influence of fsh okay now primary follicles start to develop after puberty yes two or more layers of cuboidal granulosa cells that is granu uh, zona granulosa and zona pellucida it starts surrounding new layers now are formed around that primary oocyte so zona granulosa cells now these zona granulosa cells will increase in number zona pellucida is the just the outer covering of that oocyte and it will remain with the oocyte when it is released after maturation also these granulosa cells will remain inside now the next one secondary follicle oocyte surrounded by zona pellucida of course then multiple layers of granulosa cells are there then these cells this uh, we can see here that the the granulosa cells now one more uh, layer is starts appearing that is theca cells because the when the graphene uh, follicle or the tertiary follicle which will be formed this tertiary follicle is actually surrounded by theca externa and theca interna right so the secondary follicle form after secondary follicle then the tertiary follicle this tertiary follicle is characterized by the presence of an antrum or the cavity okay uh, antrum is what antrum is a fluid filled space between granulosa cells you can see here this is the antrum right this is the antrum that is the granulosa cells uh, surrounds the fluid filled space antrum now here is the granulosa cells this is the oocyte okay these are the theca cells which are going to form theca interna and theca externa of graphene follicle okay and the oocyte is surrounded by of course zona pellucida layer right now this graphene follicle under the influence of lh it will rupture and it will release secondary oocyte how secondary oocyte is formed the primary oocyte which is there by the time the graphene follicle is formed the primary oocyte undergo first meiotic division and secondary oocyte is formed when the secondary oocyte is formed the lh surge will occur peak 
LH will be secreted highest amount from the pituitary organ under the influence of that LH. The secondary oocyte is released by rupturing of graphene follicle and this process is known as actually ovulation. So at the time of ovulation, oocyte, zona pellucida and corona radiata. These three are expelled out from the ovary in the uh, coelomic cavity in the lower abdomen region so that it will be then caught by fimbriae part of the infundibulum which is the first part of oviduct right so peritoneal cavity these will be released see the ovary is not directly attached it is not functionally attached it is not functionally attached with the uh, oviduct actually the oviduct has fimbriae like structure so the egg will be released in the peritoneal cavity it will be caught by the fimbriae of the infundibulum part and it is an opening we will see in the later slide that is the ostium from where the egg enters inside the oviduct okay now corpus luteum after rupturing and release of uh, secondary oocyte we have seen the structure that is corpus luteum which is yellow colored you know uh, ruptured uh, follicle cells are there they will transform into corpus luteum so ruptured follicle after ovulation it starts producing progesterone for two weeks if pregnancy occurs if fertilization occurs this corpus luteum continue till the placenta is formed to secrete progesterone but if fertilization does not occur then this corpus luteum will degenerate right and this corpus luteum when degenerate then it will uh, change into corpus albicans okay so corpus luteum is here this one is ovary corpus luteum this is actually the ruptured red blood a blood clot is there in the middle because the graphene uh, follicle rupture and the egg is released so the first was primary follicle we have seen then the secondary follicle then the tertiary follicle which is also known as graphene follicle after that corpus luteum and then corpus albicans these were the structures we have already seen in this slide if you remember primary secondary tertiary which is also known as graphene this one is secondary oocyte ovulation and the corpus luteum developing corpus this is mature corpus luteum and then corpus albicans so all these follicles we have studied so far right now we will move to yeah these are the name again which is important for your need what are atratic follicle which uh, the follicle which do not you know form the egg secondary oocyte they undergo degeneration and these are known as atratic follicle okay it can um, occur at any stage of the development before puberty or reproductive period or you know when they uh, the um, child attains the during the you know uh, time period where the child attains the sexual maturity that is puberty okay and these ovarian follicles first they form the glassy membrane then fibrosa layer is formed and then they disappear so atratic follicle that is with the follicles which undergo degeneration now after ovary the next part is oviduct i told you that the ovary are not functionally uh, this uh, structurally attached to the oviduct this is the first part of the oviduct which is known as infundibulum this is the ampulla part this is the isthmus part right infundibulum has the interior part which is fimbriae that have got cilia like structure in the middle there is a pore which is known as ostium when the egg is released with the help of this fimbriae the egg is entered inside that ostium and it will enter inside the oviduct so the infundibulum then the ampulla and the isthmus when the egg reaches here actually the fertilization occur at the junction of ampulla and isthmus fertilization occur so what is the site of fertilization ampulla isthmus junction and then the zygote starts dividing after 24 hours from this site only and then at the it will form first morula then blastula then you know the blastula will come here and then attach to the membrane of the uterus we will see all these steps
steps the uh, coming slides so that's all for oviduct now we come to the part very good that was actually the uterus we will study here the detail of uterus now the uterus has because this is the oviduct so oviduct enter into the uterus the uterus has the of course the fundus part dome shaped part this after that fundus part is the main body part of the uterus so this is one is body part of the uterus after that body part that was the third part which is actually the cervix part okay so this is actually the cervix part now this cervix has i told you that two opening right so the two opening that is one and two this internal orifice here so this is internal orifice and the external orifice this one which opens into vagina part so this forms the cervical canal okay so this is actually the cervix of uterus and which form the cervical canal now when we come to the uterine cavity then the uterus has three layers that is the first one is outermost perimetrium the second one is myometrium and the innermost is endometrium which keeps on thickening of this endometrium keeps on changing during the cyclic event right i think uh, the structure is very much clear and uh, so here again that the cervix see from outside to inside we start from here outside to inside what are the structure okay so the cervix part this one right the cervix part has the first part that is external orifice then the cervical canal then the internal orifice cervix over of cervix of the uterus part over now the body cavity so the body right and this body cavity has the uterine cavity okay and then the fundus part dome shaped part so these are the main important part of the uterus now we have done the part of the uh, female reproductive system that is the ovary then the detail of all the follicular cells and the formation of uh, secondary oocyte that is egg and then we will see uh, we have seen the structure of oviduct and then the uterus thank you so much that's all for today in the next slide we will study oogenesis hormonal control of oogenesis right and then we will start the fertilization process thank you children